You're welcome to special anointing for families. Part one. So I'm looking at making your home a blessing. That's making your family a blessing. In Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 14, it says, saying, surely blessing I will bless thee, and multiplying I will multiply thee. God said blessing is going to bless your family, and I decree that to be your portion. Amen. In Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 3, the B part, it says, but he blessed the habitation of the just. I declare the name of Jesus. From today, your home will be declared blessed. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hear this and hear me well. Your home should be a place where God dwells. Free from sorrow. Free from pressure, discord, chaos, and poverty. It should be a place of blessing, joy, peace, abundance, and fellowship. God's desire is for you to experience the best. Say, God's desire is for my family and my home to experience the best. He said, the blessing of the Lord, it maketh rich and added no sorrow with it. Proverbs 10, 22. God does not want to bless you and then you have sorrow. When God created all things, when he came to man, he said, it is very good. In Genesis 1, after he created all things, when he got to man, verse 31, he said, man was what? Very good. And he is the initiator of marriage and family. And the initiator said, it is what? Very good. So it's, he never planned it for evil. God never planned evil for your family. In case you have been countering confusion, and chaos, know that it's not from God. Because God cannot say something very good at the same time, confusion will come in it. Say every perfect and every good gift. James 1, 17. Every perfect and good gift comes from where? Every good and perfect gift is from above and coming down from the Father of lies, with whom there is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Every good and perfect gift come from God. May you experience good in your family beginning from today. Amen. Now, how to enjoy? God wants you to enjoy blessings. So how to enjoy blessings in your family? How do I enjoy what? Blessings in my family. How? How do I enjoy blessings in my family? Family is made up of husband, wife, and children, sometimes relatives. Orders. Maintain a good relationship. Number one, maintain what? Good relationship. Maintain a good relationship. There's a powerful supernatural relationship that exists between God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. In 1 John 5, 7, there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are what? One. There's nothing God wants to do that you will not hear let us. You will not hear let him. He said, let us make man. Their relationship is so strong that the devil couldn't succeed in creating war in heaven. God believes in relationships. God believes in what? In this context, relationship means to connect, to live together in love. So develop and maintain the love nature of God in your family as to ever remain together. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, they are together. So God expects the wife, the husband, the children to be together in a relationship. Is that clear, sir? So let us. I pray from today, nothing will break the family in the name of Jesus Christ. How to enjoy blessings in your family, number two, after relationship, cultivate the virtue of forgiveness. Cultivate the virtue of what? Forgiveness. Develop a forgiving spirit. Uh, 
Unforgiveness capitalizes on the past and keeps bringing up to you what others have done to you in the past. And if you keep doing that and you meditate on it, you'll feel hot and bitter. Unforgiveness can stop progress. What has your husband done that cannot be forgiven? What, have, what has your wife done that cannot be forgiven? What has your in-laws done that cannot be forgiven? Stop holding such in your heart. I pray you let go and move forward. Because unforgiveness opens the door to confusion, strife, fighting in the family. It gives room to the devil. And he said, give no place to the devil. The past horse must be allowed to go so you can lay hold on the colorful destiny and be blessed. Let me say this to you. Unforgiveness will lead to bitterness. And when bitterness is not checked, it will lead to hatred. And if hatred is not checked, it can even lead to murder. That was what happened between Cain and Abel. Uh, it starts from where? Unforgiveness will lead to what? Bitterness. And bitterness not checked will lead to hatred. Every time I hate somebody, check the foundation, it came from unforgiveness. I hate this man. It's from that forgiveness you move to what? Bitterness. And bitterness and bitter's destiny. Let me show you something in Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 15. Shall we all read responsibly together Hebrews 12, 15? Looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. It embitters bitterness. If you're bitter against your spouse, these are the signs. When your spouse is in the living room, you want to be in the bedroom. If your spouse is in the bedroom, you want to stay in the living room. And there's usually no rest within you. Learn the secret of instant forgiveness. Instant what? That's the only way you can overcome it. Instant what? That is forgive as soon as you are offended. That's the meaning. Instant forgiveness means forgive as soon as you are offended. So you can live a peaceful and burden free life. Say amen to that. Amen. This is one of the secrets of success in marriage and family life. In James 3.16, it says, For where envying and strife is, there is confusion and every evil work. Many have lost their homes and marriages to unforgiveness and bitterness. Please, don't join them. Do what? Show me it pays to forgive. Say it one more time. Say like a child of God. Yes. Number three thing to do to enjoy blessing in the home, you'll be surprised. And the family is be humble. Be what? Be humble. It may look simple, but it's very powerful. Be humble. Number one, I said, what is it? Maintain a good word. Number two. And number three, be humble. Be what? Humble. It takes, you know, without humility, you can't say, I'm sorry. Proud people struggle to say, I'm sorry. <laughs> You'll be shocked. One of the signs of pride is you will find it difficult to say, I'm sorry. It's a very high sign of pride. James 4, 6. Shall we read together? But he giveth more grace, wherefore he saith, 
God resisted the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. So grace is only available to the humble. Proverbs 16 verse 18. Proverbs 16 verse 18. Shall we read together? Pride goeth before destruction, and a haughty spirit before a fall. Pride and destruction are twins. They are what? Pride is devastating. It begins in the heart. It begins where? Pride begins in the heart. It makes a woman despise her husband. Perhaps because she's better educated or better paid in her job. She looked at him and said, who is this man? I have masters. He has HND. I have PhD. Please hold your dollars. I have PhD, he has no HD. <laughs> so, even in her heart, when he's talking, he says, what does he know? I don't have a PhD. You know, it's pride is of the heart. It all overflows on our side. In fact, if I tell some, some ladies are not married yet, not because no man is interested in marrying them, that's not true, but because of pride. Which makes them see men who come to them as not being equal to their standard. They look at the men arrogantly and conclude they can't cater for me. This man can't take care of me. That's the language you hear. How can this one take care of me? Can't. They can't buy me the kind of car I want to use. They want men with big cars, big jobs and good jobs. Big houses. So everybody that comes, they size the man. They are full of themselves. They think they are too much for men. Therefore, look down on them. Not because men are not coming, but they say, no, 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 no I can't go for this one. And it's also pride that will make a man treat his wife as a slave. Because he sees us as nobody. Are you hearing me now? Please be humble. Be what? Stay tuned. David Abume will be right back. We are building, consciously and unconsciously, we are raising our children, the next generation. They are the future. Wait a minute. In what direction are you raising your children? Building a Godly Generation by David Ibiomi, a masterpiece with proven insights to raise children that would stand tall in life. Engage practical knowledge. Let's raise the next generation. We need a new breed of Godly children. Get this book now at the Knowledge Center of Salvation Ministries and in any leading bookstore worldwide. You can call plus 234-809-521-6466 or visit our website at www.samhos.org slash store to order for this book today. Psalms 22 verse 22. I will stand up, therefore the congregation, and testify of the wonderful things you have done. Every day, we are reminded of God's faithfulness with the numerous testimonies wrought through God's servants and evidence in all nations of the earth. Now, you can share and document your Salvation Ministry's testimonies by sending a mail to testimony at smhos.org. Welcome to Our Salvation with David Ibiomi. There are three things you'll be shocked that can make every family go. They look simple. There are three A's. Appreciation. Apology. Are you going to say that? Anywhere you see somebody say thank you. He's a humble person. I'm sorry. For whatever I've done. Immediately. Are you going to say that? Some people will never apologize. Nothing can kill them. They can't apologize. Ah. Even when they are wrong, they will go around it somehow. It's all to say sorry. They go around it. They say no, but um, let's let's face it. Why should they talk to me that way? 
Don't think that the way he talked is not proper. The way she talked to me, you know I'm a man, she's a woman. And in the natural, you should expect a woman to say sorry. His, well, his problem is not anything, his problem is what? Right. He's full of himself. Even when he's wrong, he wants the woman to say sorry. Pride is both sides, so. Is what? There are men who are proud, there are women who are proud. There are men who can never tell you sorry. You can't have peace that way. You can't enjoy blessing that way. You are not Mr. Right. You are not Mrs. Right. So learn to say, sorry, it does not remove anything from you. So I hear. Do you know some parents even are stumbling blocks to their children? Because of pride. Families too are very proud. They size their daughter's suitor and conclude, this young man is low. It's not in our class. Our social status, you can't fit. No, this boy can't fit in. But our financial class and you know the, the family, this is our family. You can't you can't come so low. No, no. No. You know I'm chief. If you want to marry the young boy, should at least belong to a class. So everyone that comes say, Who is his father? <laughs> so the girl will never marry because they keep sizing all the men and the men say okay oh. hey, stay there you marry yourself the easiest way to be humble is to make yourself of no reputation make yourself of no that is the easiest way to be humble he said let this man be in you which was also in Christ Jesus we thought not for, to, be rob, to be equal with God. We made himself of no reputation. Philippians 2, 5 to 7. Let this mind also be you. Remember that Jesus made himself of no what? Reputation. We are full of reputation. Do you know where I am? Proud people, that's what they say. Do you know where I am? That I want to marry my daughter. <laughs> you know, you know our family, you, you. Where, where is your father? And the girl, you are getting old. You are waiting for your father. Won't you tell yourself truth that you are getting old? Your father has kept you in the house. See now, your mother has kept you. Thank you. My brother, going to start your life with the young man. Put on a mixed spirit. Say that. Put on a mixed spirit. Say it one more time. Not minding what name people will call you. When you are meek, they can call you any name they like. You have a lot to gain by being meek. God will only guide the meek and will only teach the meek his ways. When you are meek, God will find it difficult to guide you, will find it difficult to teach you. May that become your testimony. Amen. Shout a better amen. amen. Do you want blessings in your family? Then be meek. Be what? Be humble. Be what? Humility does not reduce people. It promotes people. With all humility before God, the first sign you see around me is humility. I come down to any level. You think to tell my wife, sorry, it would be hard for me? No way. If I offend her, I'll tell her, sorry. Does it remove the anointing on my head? Okay, stay there. Which one do you want? Wahala or sorry? You don't know Wahala is more costly. Tension in the house is more costly than sorry. One sorry can diffuse all the tension. But he said, no, no, I can never tell her, sorry. Never. For what? Two of you will be under heat. And if woman give you heat, it becomes heater. <laughs> you know why? <laughs> they the ones who control the home. A woman, the atmosphere of a home is controlled by a woman, not by a man. It, that's why if you go to visit the husband and wife and the wife is frowning, forget it. If the man is frowning, they can touch him. But if the wife frown, ah, kitchen is she will meet. Will you meet the man there? Parlor, you see, you meet. South food, you see, you meet. So you, you can't be comfortable. If the man frown, they can touch him. Anytime he's coming, they just go to your room and sleep. But woman, that's why the woman determines the atmosphere of the home. So all of us be humble. Be what? Finally, number four. Are you blessed? Before, it's just not anointing. These are the things we have to put together before the anointing. Is that clear? Now, if I anoint you and you are not humble, and you are proud, there will still be confusion. Through? We'll go to anointing section for God to give peace, for God to give us. But if these things are not what? 
in place, blessings can come. Why? Well, okay, how can God bless a proud man? There's no way God can bless what? A proud man. There's no way. It's too big. Okay, how will uh, the anointing will it make a woman who is proud? Proud, proud women. Many young girls now, no devil is rolling them from no money, you know. It's just pride. Just what? It's pride. You want to buy a young man who has motor. Your father has many motor. Does your father have? <laughs> Let's be realistic with life. Are you going to say that? I want to make more. Okay, the motto you have is a man that bought it for you. It's not your father. So come down and start life with a young man. That you're driving car. Okay, you didn't buy it from your office. You didn't work for the motto? No. A man bought it for you. Now, friendship and marriage are not the same. 50 years of friendship is not equal to one day of marriage. So you want to marry. Come to reality that look, this young man is who I love. I want to stay with him. He doesn't have motto. Tomorrow he can buy motto. True? Calm down. He said, well, I'm using a Honda, what do you call it? Discovery or what do you call it? End of uh, discussion. <laughs> so this uh, discussion has uh, ended. <laughs> so he must have beginning of discussion. <laughs> Please, all those are not necessary. They are not what? That's it. Number four, if you want blessing, keep the right company. Keep the right what? Company. Keep the right company. Proverbs 13 verse 20. He said, He that walketh with the wise shall be wise. A companion of fools shall be destroyed. The company you keep will either make you or destroy you. It will never leave you neutral. Major cause of problems in some homes today is wrong association. Wrong what? Wrong association will make you to receive wrong counsel against your husband, wife, and family. When wrong people live your life, wrong things will stop happening. If your life is expressed wrong thing, then somebody wrong is around you. And when right people enter your life, good things will start happening. Every wrong thing around you, there was a wrong person. And every good thing around you, there was what? A good person. Detach yourself from any child of Belial who brings tension in your home. So I'll stop that association so it will not stop me. He said, Iron, where I quoted was Proverbs 13, verse 20. I, I told you the scripture. It says, iron sharpened what? Iron, Proverbs 27, verse 17. So a man sharpened the countenance of his friend. Receive grace to dissociate yourself from evil company in the name of Jesus. If you look at scriptures, you remember that Abraham had to separate from love before he could enter into the great things God has prepared for him. If you read Genesis chapter 13, 7 to 17. Be selective. Be what? Selective. Let me say this to you, to all women. If any woman has ever had problem in her marriage, check very well it's from your friend. If you don't want trouble, love people but have no friend. Have no what? 